Hello, it's Nikki and welcome back. I have a juicy, lovely five-part series for you this week, um, which is all about designing and delivering a brand new offering. And this can work whether it's a course, whether it's, uh, I don't know, a book or a one-to-one offering, a group program, a membership, um, whatever it might be. And I really want to dive into this from a place of helping you to come to some decisions based on the business model, the lifestyle that you want to have. And what I often see online is these sort of blanket statements um, said or written by people that I don't really know, but subconsciously I might take them on. So those kind of people who say webinars are dead, I'm like, are, are they though? Because I've just bought something based on a webinar that I saw or memberships are no more. And then I might hear somebody else on a podcast saying, well, actually I make 10 grand a month. I make a hundred grand a month um, from my membership. There are so many conflicting things. And I do think uh, sometimes people will create these titles because they want to be not dramatic necessarily, but they want you to find out more. They want you to maybe buy the thing that is the opposite to those things. And so I'm often quite careful with the way that I approach my next stages of business. And what I've actually learned to do is to listen into what feels good for me, because ultimately I know personally that I have to feel good about what it is that I'm delivering. If I don't, I'm not going to do it anyway. I'm not going to sell it. So I may as well pay attention to, I guess, my inner guide, my inner voice, my instinct, my intuition of like, does this make sense to me? And I've often found that with making decisions in life as well, you know, everybody will have an opinion on something. And certainly when I was a teenager and I was moving to London and I was doing something very like out of the box of what most people were doing, oh my goodness, the chatter and the feedback and the like, just think about this. And like, these were people I barely knew. And I very quickly learned how to turn down the volume of those things. So I want to give you a reminder before we actually kick off that this is about you. And of course, Sometimes uh, testing it with a market will give you, well, often it will give you ideas, it will give you information, it will give you data, it will give you real life people, real person's live feedback. That's really difficult to say. Um, But I don't want you to discount your own feelings and thoughts and your inner knowing. That is really, really important because it has to feel good for you. There's no point actually doing the opposite where... You're, you follow what everybody else out there says, and then you have that disconnect yourself. So I'm going to give you two examples um, as we go, because I think it's important to um, give you a bit of storytelling, a bit of context to this, because two of my signature programs have recently relaunched, and I've really enjoyed sharing them and welcoming people in in this new way. The first is Create Your Income Pie, and the second one is Speak Up. Now, these principles I have been teaching for many, many years, and I know myself that, just to give a little bit of background, that it was time for them to gain a little bit of a makeover. And what I actually found was when I went in and I looked at what needed to happen, I ended up doing a lot more than just a makeover. I actually ended up rewriting, restructuring, adding in and really boosting up these courses, these offerings to be something that was really great. But the first thing that I want to um, share with you today, especially when you're exploring a new offering, is does it do anything emotionally to begin with? Now, this, of course, might be in the transformation or it may be like, I could do this. I could sell this thing that people keep asking me and I keep giving giving it them the information for free. And if I do this oh my goodness, I could take my child on holiday or I could leave my corporate job. So when we're talking about emotions, 
It doesn't have to be all Miss World, like, oh my gosh, I feel like I've connected with my purpose. Or if you're not feeling that, like waiting and stopping and holding off. But equally, if you know that you can deliver something or work in a different way that's going to enhance your life, it's going to enhance those around you and the work that you do. And so the two things that I guess I started with in terms of speak up was, I was seeing a lot of the same flavors for um, for speaking. I was seeing a lot of really shiny royal blue suits. I was watching people uh, just being a bit weird on stage, to be honest. That's the only way I can describe it. A bit passive aggressive, a bit belittling. And I know I got caught out a couple of times on these self-development things where I put my hand up and I shared something. And I wasn't necessarily laughed at, but it was greeted with a like, oh yeah, (laughs) and I don't know, it was just a bit weird. And I kept coming back to the people that I knew and the people that were in my world who really help people and how they do that, how they make people feel seen. And maybe that's in a kind of one-to-one basis. And I knew that lots of those people were really struggling with becoming more visible. They knew that they had that potential to share that message with a bigger people, uh, with, with a bigger audience. And I just thought to myself, I've got that acting training. I am a paid speaker. And wouldn't it be great if the assortment, that the array of people out there included a lot of these people who are heart-centered, who really hold space for people, um, different stories to be told. And so I don't like to say that I got anger towards it, but I was beginning that to get this frustration, you know? There was this story all the time of imposter syndrome, and I just thought it was such an unhelpful phrase. I was like, why are we identifying with this thing called imposter syndrome? And then, of course, I went into a bit of pageant mum of like, you should be there, get to the front, you're amazing, you can do this. And instead of just, you know, uh, doing that, I wanted to help people to find it for themselves. Likewise with when I started to share this designing your own business model work, um, it was in my early 30s, maybe just before I'd become a mum, and I was just thinking that early 30s was a real moment where people were told they had to shelve their dreams because they were old now, they should know better now, they were an adult now, and I know everybody's in a different situation and certainly some of my friends in their early 30s, you know, they were at capacity, they were caring for people, they were doing lots of different things. However, I know that if you have a dream or a hope or a want or a desire and it's and you feel like it's meant for you, it's not just going to disappear overnight, it's going to keep showing up Um, because it wants you to pay attention to it. And I knew I wanted to be part of this conversation of helping people to find a way. And again, I wasn't prepared to say, well, this is the only thing that you're going to do and like, just do this one thing and it will be so easy for the rest of your life. But I wanted to be part of that conversation. I wanted to help people to find a way or examine examine possibilities or how could you still have a part of that but again help it work with the rest of your life so before you delve into designing a new offering I want you to consider this is there any emotion behind that is there something within you that really goes woof yes actually this could unlock something so again This could be for your client, for your customer. You know, I love it now when I see people who have done Speak Up, for example, um, and they go and I see them on stages, I hear them on podcasts, you know, huge, huge things. I see them on the telly, sitting on the sofa. And likewise, you know, I love it when I get messages from people who have done Create Your Income Pie who say, I've made space to, oh, yeah, it's emotional. I made space to welcome the baby that I wanted to have. 
or I can now take care of my husband or I found a way that I can work two days a week and so I'm not in this constant cycle of burnout. Whatever it is, everybody's dream will be different. But for me, that's why I keep coming back to this work because it's emotional for me. I I know that power of that transformation and I know that that feels really good, the way that I can deliver that and help people and really work with what's going on for them. So that's your first test for today. When you think about this, when you explore it, does it cultivate an emotional response? And if it doesn't immediately, can you find one? Can you explore further? What kind of impact or help could you truly create from putting this offering into the world? And again, this might be a test. If you get to the end of it and you're like, actually, it's not going to do anything. It's, it's it's a bit useless, really. I don't like saying the word useless, but it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very average idea I've had. And I'm speaking from my own experience here. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, this, this idea is not going anywhere. And so this exercise, this process has given me the nudge that I need just to park it. Maybe revisit it later on, but certainly it's not for now. So I hope you enjoy that. As always, let me know. Um, the most kind of significant in terms of designing a new package offering service for this is create your own income pie. So if you want to find out more about that, I will leave the link down below. There is a done with me option and a DIY option as well. So I hope you enjoy and I'll catch you in part two. Bye.